you need to build a new course, and we need it next week. Hearing something like this can make even the most experienced teacher or trainer nervous. However, the demand for this just-in-time training and on-demand training is increasing at a very rapid pace. Developing new courses for students, in-house audiences, corporate clients and workplaces is a skill that's become very sought after, in demand and becoming more commonplace. Learners are looking towards online, computer and mobile learning to quickly get up to speed on new skills and concepts and schools and employers need a way to deliver and measure the skills of their students and their workforce. This means we're looking for new ways to deliver. Expectations are that we create shorter courses of just-in-time skills, fast courses that we can create and modify quickly, courses that engage by being interactive and visually appealing, the ability to build simulations, quizzes, and other measurement tools into the learning, ways to collaborate with others while we're building these courses, and a way to manage these courses that will conform with the LMS systems that we're using so that we can be compliant with things like SCORM. That doesn't seem like too much to ask, does it? Oh, and we also need to be able to build these courses using familiar tools with a low learning curve so that we can get them into the learner's hands quickly and we don't require specialists to build the courses for us. Well, if you can use PowerPoint, I have some good news for you. iSpring, the sponsor of this video, has a suite of tools that works with PowerPoint to meet all of the challenges I've outlined and more. I've seen a lot of tools for teaching and training and I can honestly say that I'm extremely impressed with iSpring Suite and the way I can build training and content using it. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the features of the iSpring Suite and how I can quickly build a course with interactive elements right from within PowerPoint. I'll also show you how we can create a simulation that we can put into our course. It's definitely worth checking this out, so let's take a look iSpring is super useful. It's become one of my favorite new tools. If I go into their website, iSpringSolutions.com, you can see underneath their products they have the iSpring Suite and iSpring Learn. You can get a free trial so you can try it out for yourself after you've watched this video and I do recommend you do that. When you launch the iSpring Suite, it launches and you get the opportunity to create courses, quizzes, simulations, screencasts, interactions and books and you can even create pages and online quizzes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a course because that's sort of the backbone of it. And you'll notice that it has the PowerPoint icon because what it does is it plugs into and works with PowerPoint. So you have a familiar design environment. You get an iSpring menu and you log into your account and get all of this additional functionality, which is then converted into a course. It's really neat. So let's have a look at doing that. So I'm going to go in, you can see I can do narration here, I can record audio, I can insert quizzes, interactions, dialogues, simulations, screen recordings, YouTube videos. I have a content library of templates and characters and backgrounds, different objects and icons. I can modify the presentation, how it looks and how it plays. I can preview and then I can publish and share it. Let's go into a slide templates. This brings me out to iSpring and I can download really nice templates, about 100 downloads per day, which is enough. And if I go in here, you'll see there's all of these professionally designed course templates. These are PowerPoint templates, but they're designed around the idea of delivering a course. So I'm gonna choose one that matches the theme of the course I wanna work with. In this case, I'll create like an outdoor course. So we're gonna travel and we're gonna do a nice outdoor hike. So what I can do is insert individual slides from that template, or because I wanna build an entire course, I'm gonna choose all of the slides that relate to that course. And this is basically the outline of an entire online course. So I'm gonna choose all of these. It'll have everything like module introduction, objectives, different types of ways to convey information, uh, different templates where I can insert videos, and I'm gonna augment this course by going into iSpring and adding quizzes and interactions and all of those cool things. So let's insert those in. Now those will count as part of my 100 downloads per day. So I usually save it as a template and then I can reuse it. Don't have to re-download it, but I'll still have the iSpring menu. These are beautiful little you know, slides that are designed and really linked together in a logical format for a course. Let's get rid of my blank one there. Go to the iSpring menu here. And what I can do is go slide by slide and augment it to what I need. Changing the text, changing any type of interaction, putting a quiz in there, all of this. 
So you can see that there's all sorts of nice slides in there that I can make my own by modifying them. Now what I'm going to do is let's say I want to create a new slide. I can just use the insert menu and I can insert a slide that will be on theme with this template. Now in this case here it's just a you know a slide that has a title in it but if if I want to choose any other type it'll be on theme with the template so I don't have to re-download it. If I go in I can change my own backgrounds on here so if I want to put a new background on here I can download from their site which has all sorts of backgrounds. In my case I'm going to download a travel background from iSpring and I'm going to put this as my first slide when the course begins. Notice that does count against my downloads. So or I can bring my own in as well. So here I have this nice background for the very first slide. Again, I'm going to go into, I could format the picture, change it up a bit, but I'm going to go in. This is one of my favorite features. I have a lot of favorite features. This is characters. Now, the, the library of professional models that they have is huge and it's divided in such a nice way. It's divided by ethnicity, divided by actions, divided by direction that they're facing, divided by emotion. So let's say I want to begin this course with a smiling, happy person in the background of the airport. We're getting ready to go on our course on our trip. And look at all of the different professional models that I have from, you know, again, different genders, different ethnicities, different emotions. In my case, I chose happy and smiling, so I'm filtering out by that. So I'll take uh, this character Holly, smiling, thumbs up, going to download that. And now I can put that professional model around my background and I can scale it out. Now you can scale it of course so that it, you know, if you just want the top, the torso, you can, or just the face, you can do that as well. So here, I think this looks pretty good having the full body shot with the airport. So that's going to be the introduction to my course. Now I can go in and add quizzes and all sorts of cool things as well. I can modify the properties of the slide. There's a lot you can do here. Let's go in. Let's say I want to go in and create a slide in here where I want to create, I'll just create a blank slide. I'm going to show you how I can insert an interaction. I'm going to put this as an interaction, but I can insert a quiz. I can insert a simulation, a YouTube video. Uh, there's only so much time I can do today here to show you the features, but I'll do one where I can show you, for example, I could insert a background of, that they provide. I can even insert my own background. So I can use my own imagery here as well. So for example, underneath my pictures here, I have some images for teaching. You'll see that I, I could put in a background of some camping gear that I have. So, or maybe it's a picture of the hike. I did it last year and I want to show people where they're going to go this year. So I could put in this, uh, this slide in here, use it as a background. And there you go. Nice background slide in there. I have different types of templates. So let's create an interaction. Now you'll notice when I say to create an interaction, it actually opens up the suite. And now I'm going into the interaction section of the suite and I'm going to create a new interaction. But I basically said on the PowerPoint, I want to create an interaction. I get all sorts of templates and, and tutorials here. And these are all the different types of interactions I can add into my course. Step by steps, timelines. I'm going to do a, a labeled graphic. So I'm going to go into my labeled graphic and underneath my labeled graphic, I'm going to choose my background. This is a food background, but I'm going to, I'm going to change that. So I'll click on the change there and we'll make it my hiking gear background. So there's all sorts of interactions. So you could put these into your course. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose that equipment that I had. And this is, you know, so I have all this equipment and you'll notice there's three labels by default and I can move them around. So these are little labels that I can put onto different objects in an image. So this would be part of my course now. So if somebody's taking this course, when they reach this slide, which won't look like a slide, it'll look like a course, they'll have an interaction. I can go in and I can add more labels on here and put those you know, on there onto the object that I want to have on here, whatever that object might be. And then I can go through, of course, I'm not going to call the labels label. So I can go in and I can put the proper name in there. So let's say, for example, this is a compass. So I can put compass in there. And you'll notice that I also have a section below where I can add things like images and text and I can add elements into the label itself. I'm, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. You see, I put some labels on here and then what I can do is let's grab, say the compass and I'll just put in a little bit of text in here, but I could put images in here. I can put all of the, I can change the colors of this label. I can change the icons for the label. Maybe I want to make it so that they look at one, two, three, four. Maybe I want to put different types of icons. Maybe I want to use different colors depending on what the image is. 
a color that's more appropriate that looks better i can change the properties of this interaction so i'll give it a name so for example i don't want to call it you know unlabeled or interaction i'll call it our equipment right i can change some information on there in terms of the presentation of it but what i'm going to do here is you can see as i move around i can see the different labels and go through it and see what it will look like to the person that's taking the course right now it's just different names but now i'll apply and close that and now because I called it, I can go in and save it and go back to the course that I was developing in the PowerPoint environment. And now look what I have. I have an entire slide here that's an interaction. So when I, when I publish the course, and we'll see this when I preview it, you'll see that I'll have a slide called an interaction. So if we go in, we can preview the course. So let's, you know, I haven't done a lot. I'd go through slide by slide and add quizzes and add interactions and such. But when I do preview, it'll process the course and you'll see there's my initial slide. That's what the user will see. This is what they'll see on an iPad in uh, or a tablet in both uh, landscape and portrait mode, portrait mode or landscape mode mobile device, portrait mode mobile device. So I can preview the course in the various devices. I can go through next, next, next. You can see on the side, you know, here's my interaction where I can go in. This is what they'll see when they're using the course. On the side, they'll have all of the different slides that they're gonna go through. I can put, uh, all sorts of information on here like notes and such. I can even change how this will appear though. I'll show you that in a moment too. But this is the course that they will see. There are many different destinations that I can publish too. So when I go into the iSpring menu, I can publish. Notice I can publish out to my computer. So I can save it on my computer. iSpring space, the L LMS provided by iSpring, my own LMS, and even to YouTube as a video. So if I go to the LMS, notice it's all SCORM compliant. So if I'm using Brightspace, D2L, some other type of LMS, I can publish right out to there. I can also use their LMS. So there is an LMS by iSpring where I can have my course content on there. I can have multiple courses on there. Manage it as a learning management system. That Learning management systems are beyond the scope of this video, but if you're interested, let me know. And I can also put this out to iSpring Space, which is basically a portal where I can share it out. I can collaborate on it. I'll show you that in a moment as well. And of course, my computer and YouTube. Let's put it out to the iSpring Space. And I'll speed this up a little bit because it takes a little while to process the slides. But this is interactions, quizzes, screencasts, YouTube videos. Everything is being published. When I go to manage the content, this is where it lives. So here it is in the iSpring space. I can choose the courses that I've created. And underneath the courses I've created, I can go into, there's the ellipse here. And you can see I can do all sorts of things. I can preview it, I can add it to start. But the two big ones is I can collaborate and I can share. So I can collaborate with other people to build on the course and I can share it out. And when I share it out, this is what it would look like to anybody coming in. Actually, sorry, this is me uh, working with it again. So if I go in here, I can modify all of the slides. So I can set the slide timing if I want it to autoplay. Otherwise, the user has to advance next, 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 but I can make it autoplay like a video. I can go in and add narrations in there. I can branch out. So depending on what the user chooses, I can add branching. I'm going to show you simulations where we do that quite a bit. It's very interesting. Now notice here that this view that I have of the slides here is going to be one where there's the slide and on the side you can see the upcoming slides. I can, put a, I can change that view so that there's a video on one side and the slide on the other side. Um, I can change to where the video appears so on the other I can put it left and right. Now remember this is the, just the opening slide. This could also be the interaction. So I could have a video here with me saying, hey, click on the labels and see our equipment. So this is, for example, if I didn't record a video, but this is what it would look like across all of the different devices with my video on one side and the course content on the other. Course content being a slide, course content being an interaction, a quiz, whatever the case may be. So that different content types make for very interesting courses. I'm gonna go back to the iSpring suite. And so you can see I've got all my courses here that I've been developing. So those are all the PowerPoint courses that I've developed with iSpring. I can make quizzes in here. I can do simulations, which I'm gonna demonstrate in a moment. I can do screencasting, so I can record a screencast. I can work with projects around screencasting. I can create the interaction here and then add it to a course. But you'll notice that I called it from the course and then I added it into the course. So this is the same tool where I create the interactions. You can create books from different documents you have. 
So workbooks and handouts, all that type of stuff. Uh, within the iSpring space, you can create a page there. So it's like you can write a book there or you can work with online quizzes. I can't demonstrate all of these because this video would be very long if I did. Let me know if you want any specific videos on this. But I'm going to do a simulation because I think it's such a unique feature that it's, it's definitely worth playing around with and I'd like you to see it. So underneath simulations, what I can do is I can give the simulation a name underneath properties. So let's say I'm going to do a very simple HR training. Now in my case, it's going to be super simple. It's not going to be a complex one, but it's going to demonstrate the power. I can even collect information on a scoring situation here with the quiz or with the simulation and I can ask for user information. So I could have somebody come into this simulation, provide me with their name and their email and any of the other information that I ask for. You can even modify what you want to call it. So I can go in here. In my case, I'm just going to ask for that, but I'm going to make it super simple. Let's just clear those two out and I'm just going to create a simple simulation. Now what a simulation is, is basically an interactive walkthrough. So I'm going to start off with a new scene. I'm going to choose a model and then I can choose the reaction of that model. So the first thing you're going to see is, is a happy model here and that happy model is going to be in a place. So with a background, I can choose a background that's built in. These do not count against your, um, against your download quota. These are built into the simulation tool. So this particular model is going to be happy and there's going to be in a retail outlet. You can set the color code depending and you'll see that at the top when you run the simulation. And this model is going to say something. It's going to say welcome to the HR training. So this model is going to say welcome to the HR training and you have a choice then. The user will have a choice to say either awesome, you know, they're happy to be here and that's one of the replies they can select or they could say something like, you know, a negative response. So I have a positive response, I'm happy to be here and a negative response of what I don't need any training. So this is per the person that doesn't need any training. Now obviously you can have multiple responses, you can have different types of responses, but that acts as my first tile. And you'll notice that the responses have links on them. So what I'm going to do is create a scene here that says, okay, so you're going to put in a response and I could either have no character in here, but what I can do is again modify all the properties. But if I go into the character, I can just take the same character that I had previously and I can change the emotion. So in this case here, let's say the person says something negative in response to my prompt. This, re this model now is unhappy and they're going to say something like, oh, you don't need any training? Well, in that case, uh, I have a surprise for you. Your training is over because you're fired, right? So obviously you would want to be nice and I could add even mul multiple replies underneath that as well. So you can have a chain of replies. And now I'm going to link the negative response in the first scene to the negative Re re reaction in the second scene. Now I'm going to create another new scene. This time they're going to be very happy because you gave a nice response. So in this case here, I'm so glad that you're here. So you can modify the emotions there as well. And now I'll link the positive response to that. Once again, you can create you know, responses to responses to responses. You can nest these down. You can branch them out. So you can create a very complex and interesting simulation. So you can add replies in there, you can modify them after the fact. So this gives you the opportunity to go in and create an entire simulation that somebody can walk through a scenario such as a fictitious interaction with a customer. Now you can also go in and do voiceovers. So this means that when the scene plays, there'll be an audio voiceover that occurs. You can also do translation and you can export this out and send this to say a Fiverr or someone that can read in different voices or if you have a female voice instead of my voice and I could record here so I could say welcome to the training. I could import some other person reading that phrase, welcome to the training or even something along the lines of, you know, welcome to the company. And now here we go. Welcome to the HR training. That could be read out and that could be audio. Somebody responds, I'm so glad you're here, right? Because they responded in the positive. Now, welcome to the training. What? I don't need any training. Now she's mad. No training. You're fired. So you can see that we can have different responses. This becomes a very powerful tool. Well, I've spoken about the capabilities of the iSpring suite, but I haven't exhausted all of the things we can do with it. There's even more that we can do, and it's all just as simple as the features that I have demonstrated. I'm interested in your thoughts. Comment down below. Have you used iSpring yourself, or do you plan to download the demo? Would you like more videos here on the channel about the iSpring suite and building a complete course from end to end? I'm planning on building many more courses using the iSpring 
personally. Uh, so this is a good tool that I'm going to be using and get a lot of use out of. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video.